Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that how do you apply reverse filters from the fact tables to the dimension tables or perhaps filters from one dimension to the other dimension table. Now, these are not very conventional way of applying filters. We'll actually take a look at a case study through which I'll explain to you the problem that I'm trying to solve and we'll build up the logic from there on. No further ado, people. Let's begin. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have created a very simple data model. You can see that we have the customers table, the calendar table and the products table. And those three tables are linked with my sales table. And also what I have done is to help you build on the problem that we're trying to solve, I have created a salary column, which is like a random salary column in the customers table that defines what the salary is going to be for that particular customer, a random salary number. Now here is the problem that I'm trying to solve. Now what I'd like to do is, I have the year and the month dragged from the calendar table placed in my pivot table. Against every single month, what I'd like to do is I'd like to find out that what is the total salary of all the customers who purchased products in that particular month. So let's just say that if 50 customers bought products in the month of January, what's the salary for all of those 50 customers? I'd like to take a total of that. Now, this is not a very straightforward question. Because if you went ahead and you wrote a very simple total salary formula and you said that I'd like to take a sum of the random salary column of the customers table and you drag that particular formula in the pivot table right here, it's actually going to return you an unfiltered like a number which actually contains the salary of everybody in the customers table. Why does it happen? Please take a look. If I go over to the data model, in the data model, you're going to find that the year and the month have the capability to filter my sales table, that's fine. But the year and the month have no capability of filtering my customers table because these two tables are not linked in any way, right? So how do I actually take the year and the month and slice this particular random salary calculation that I have right here? Now, there are two things that come to mind and both of them are incorrect, but I still want to explain to you what comes to mind. First, maybe you try to find a way to connect the customers table to the calendar table so that the filter here which is the year and the month filter can actually pass through the customers table. But the problem is that we cannot really link the customers to the calendar table because calendar has dates and the customers has got the customer key. So we can't really link those two tables. The second, you know, incorrect solution that comes to mind is that if the year and the month has the power to filter my sales table, why don't I start to write a measure in the sales table instead? And let's just actually find a way to do that. So I'm just going to go over uh, to the pivot table right here, make a new measure and start to create a very simple calculation. So I'm just going to say total salary. I'm just going to call this as incorrect because this is actually going to be an incorrect measure. And I'm going to say that I'm, I'm trying to go in every single row of the sales table. So I use a sumx function in every single row of the sales table. I'd like to do a VLOOKUP of the salary column and just close that and commit to the formula and press enter. If I drag this formula to the pivot table, the answers that I get I do get the answers, but the answers that I get are incorrect. Why are these answers incorrect? Because if you think about it, let's just assume that in the month of July, there were maybe 100 transactions that happened in the month of July. But those 100 transactions were done by, let's say, 25 customers. That means there were customers who did repeat purchases over and over again. So if I'm going in every single row of the sales table, I'm actually taking a look at every single transaction. And if the customer has repeated over and over again in the sales table, I'm doing a VLOOKUP for his salary every single time. So if the customer came to the store four times, his salary is going to be $10,000 multiplied by four, which is actually going to be a wrong way to sum the salary up, right? So I don't really want to do this. Now, the second thing that comes to mind is that why don't we create a virtual table to take a look at unique customers only? That's fair. So I'm just going to go over to the sales table, right? The values function in here and call out the customer key, close the bracket. Now what the values function does is, it takes a column of any particular table, removes the duplicate and gives you the unique values only in that column. This sounds fair, but the problem is that the related function, which is nothing but the VLOOKUP of tax, doesn't really work with the virtual table that I have created here. So this function is definitely not going to work and it's going to error out. So I'm just going to for now press escape and actually take you to a correct way of solving this problem and which is very, very easy. All right, let's just start by creating a new measure and start to play a small calculate function trick. So I'm just gonna go over to the sales table uh, and in the sales table, I'll say make a new measure, call this measure as total salary again, which is nothing but correct this time. So I'm gonna say that I'd like to still go ahead and do the sum 
of the salary column of the customers table but we saw that this particular function is not going to work properly because it doesn't really filter by the year and the month which is present right here coming from the calendar table so it doesn't really do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around this particular function in the calculate function and I'm going to say that hey I still want to calculate the sum of the random salary column but I'd like to slice this by the entire sales table because there is a relationship created between the two tables now this particular dimension can be reverse filtered by the sales table as well please take a look so if I now commit to this particular function uh, the first part is the regular expression or the calculation the second part is passing the entire fact table so that my dimension metric can be filtered so take a look if I now commit to the formula press enter drag this to the pivot table I'm actually going to get the correct salary right here now if you take a look at the numbers on the screen you will find that these two numbers seem the same because we might have had like all the transactions where all the customers were unique that's fine but if you actually take a look at the numbers at the bottom right here you're going to find that there are going to be different numbers so here the number is way larger and here the number is quite smaller because the customers must have been duplicated they came on the store a couple of times and we just have the right salary calculated here right here now one thing that I'd like to do is how do I make sure that this particular number is correct Right, this number that we have received is the right number and let's just actually go validate for the month of September in uh, 2001. So we're going to write a bit of DAX queries to go do some work to validate this particular number so that this number is actually right. All right, to be able to validate the calculation for 2001, the month of September, I'm going to write a very simple DAX query. So I'm going to go over to the window right here, say that I'd like to create a new query and I get the query pane right here. Let's just start writing a very simple query. So the table that I'm trying to work with is the sales table, but I don't really want the entire sales table. I would like to have two filters on the sales table. One is for 2001, the other one is for the month of September. So I'm going to use the calculate table function. The first part is going to be the name of the table. The second part is going to be let's say hey which year do you want so I'd like to have 2001 and which month do I would like to have so I'd like to have the month of September right let's just run this query and let's just see do we only get the data for September or not I'm just gonna press F5 and it seems like the order date is right only for September this is good now I don't really want the entire sales table all the columns what I want is from the sales table I have a customer key column and here I just want to have the unique customers which bought products from us in the month of September so I'm just gonna maybe modify this a bit so I'm just gonna use the values function in the values function I'll say that I'm still looking at the sales table but the column that I'm looking at is the customer key column so let's just say that custom key this sounds good I'm just gonna evaluate that once again and I get all the unique customers of that particular month particular year against all of these customers that I have extracted I'd like to find what is their salary and you remember that the VLOOKUP is not going to work if I start to write a related function here so I'm going to use the lookup value function right so I'm just going to go ahead and say something like add columns I'm just trying to add a column to this table and I'm going to say that this is my table uh, on which I'm trying to add a column and the column that I'm trying to add let's just call this column as a salary column and the formula for that particular column is going to be let's say the lookup value I'm trying to find the salary and uh, the search is customer key and in the sales table is also customers key all right so close that and let's just actually run this particular query and we get one more column that we have created uh, the customer key column which is the unique customers and the salary column now once we have got the data for the month of September and the salaries for all the customers let's just take this data total up all the salary values and let's just see do we get the right number or not so I'm just gonna control a control C on that data go back to Excel and in Excel I'm just gonna maybe paste that data and try to total up this particular column which is the salary column sum it all up press enter let's just take a look at what is this number this is four two seven zero one thousand let's just see do we get the same number in power bi with our function as well so i'm back in power bi and you can see that in the month of uh, september for the year of 2001 i do get the same number which is four two seven zero one thousand right so this is absolutely correct all right by using a little trick in the calculate function we were able to apply filters from one dimension table to the other dimension table so the year and the month came from the calendar table and they were actually able to filter the customers table and the random salary metric over here the same concept can be applied to do reverse filters from the facts table to the customers table what do i mean by that you will find that i have a column here which is called uh, order priority which is right here now the order priority 
could be a label which is the order is urgent or the order is a regular order so two values in this particular column an urgent order or a regular order now I'd like to find out the sum of the salary of all the customers who placed an urgent order so I'd like to be able to apply this filter and carry this filter in a reverse direction and try to filter this particular metric right here now using the same technique and the same formula I should be able to do that so if you just take a look at the pivot table that I have created we have two orders regular and urgent and I'm now taking us some of all the salaries of the customers who ordered regular or urgent in the entire time frame of the data that we have all right, that was all about uh, understanding reverse filters from facts to dimensions or filtering between one dimension table to the other dimension table. I hope you like this one. The example that I gave you was helpful. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI and you'd like to understand the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more complex problems of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial thanks so much for spending time with me on this one and i will catch you guys in the next one cheers bye